Despite the fact that Republicans are advocating murdering all of our grandmas to restart the economy, Donald Trump still commands a level of supporter enthusiasm that Democrats just can't match. So back in the before times, I met with Stacey Abrams to talk about what the Democratic Party needs to do to get voters excited, especially people of color. A long, long time ago, before the pandemic, when people were still losing sleep over the election, I tried to get away from the news by going to the one place I figured the president would never find me, a bookstore. Excuse me, do you know where the... Stacey Abrams? Samantha B. Ugh, remember handshakes? Okay, I know that it is very green book of me to ask you for emotional support. It's okay, but we you... practice in the South. Okay, thank you. What is at stake in this election? Oh, democracy, uh, humanity, and whether or not we die. Okay, so not that much, just everything Pretty much. that exists. Beating Trump in the upcoming election, assuming we actually have an election in November, <laughs> LOL, please kill me, has never been more important. And as much as I appreciate social distancing, maybe the Democrats shouldn't be doing it politically? How would you speak to a group of voters that take the approach of my candidate or bust? Let's say there's a bro out there. Sure who has d identified the only person who can save America. Mm -hmm. I think part of it is acknowledging why they like that person, but then explaining what's at stake if they don't vote for it, whoever wins. Like if I'm driving down the highway and I miss my exit, I don't just drive my car into a ditch and shoot my legs off. Exactly. No matter who the nominee is, it is the best choice for America. Because the alternative is the authoritarian populist who is trying to destabilize our democracy. I don't know if he's doing it on behalf of the Russians or just because he read a book about it. Read a book. But getting out the vote when everyone is staying inside will be difficult, especially since unlike voter suppression, coronavirus targets everyone, even white people. So what's the game plan? Instead of creating this filter that screens out people because last Thursday they liked the wrong thing on Twitter, now they're canceled, we have to be thinking about how do we bring people back into the party? How do we bring them back out to the polls? And how do you communicate that? It's a complicated thing. Okay. You have to talk to them. Ooh, uh, like, ooh. There you go. Who is not being spoken to? People of color. Can the Democratic nominee win without the support of people of color? No. That's it. We have to do the work of actually reminding them that there is a party that believes in them, and more importantly, a party that will speak for them if they elect us. Or, you know, just throw Obama in the ads. If you'd be my friend, then I'd never be alone. What is the difference between pandering and meaningful conversation? Pandering tends to be, I'm going to tell you why you need me. Conversation is, tell me what you need from me. So, Donald Trump giving a thumbs up over a taco bowl on Cinco de Mayo. I love Hispanics. Yes. And that's not the worst of it. When he's not busy touching his face, this is how our president actually talks to black voters. You're living in poverty. Your schools are no good. You have no jobs. 58% of your youth is unemployed. What the hell do you have to lose? Ugh. What did people have to lose? And what did they lose? Uh, safety, dignity, opportunity. In his three and a half years in office, he has done almost everything in his power to diminish economic opportunity for people of color. I think he has a 1% approval rating among African Americans, and that's because they count Diamond and Silk twice and Ben Carson. Did he find his luggage yet? Sorry, I just need to see this clip again. My luggage. Hopefully, Democrats have better luck finding their voters. And one good model for how to find those voters is to tear a page out of Stacey Abrams' playbook. She ran for governor in 2018, didn't win, hashtag voter suppression, hashtag rigged, but did change the get out the vote game by, well. We started our campaign by going to places no one showed up. Mm -hmm. I went to Dragon Con. I went to one music fest. I went to a gun show. I went to where they filmed Deliverance. You know that the message from that movie is, don't go to that place. I'm a rebel. You really are. And people talk to you. They did. Simply having someone speak to them 
made them think about whether or not voting mattered. And we got more people to vote in a midterm than any time in Georgia history. Even the elusive white voters? In fact, we got more of them than what? any Democratic candidate in a generation. If Stacey Abrams got people to vote and Democrats need people to vote, oh, let me do the math here. Oh my goodness, Stacey Abrams for vice president? I've spoken to all of the presidential candidates. Joe Biden called you on a landline for sure. We had a turkey sandwich. Was it like early in the day? It was like 9 a.m., that's my lunch. We had a lovely time. Really? I have made it very clear that if someone wanted me, I'd be happy to join them in the second half of this fight. Really? Think about it, there is no better platform than to be standing with the president as we fix democracy. Oh boy. And it would be my honor to have a chance to do that. You just made me feel so much better about the election. I might be the first person in history to go out there Malarkey. and canvas for VP. We're best friends now. And after social distancing is over, she will definitely want to hang out with me.